fellow gardener, welcome to my channel. My name is Jara and I teach people how to garden and grow food. If you've been following me for some time, you probably noticed that I'm quite obsessed with growing tomatoes. I grow all sorts of tomatoes from micro dwarfs to beef steaks, from heirlooms to hybrids. I love them all. Today I harvested all of these tomatoes from my garden, so I decided to make this tomato review video just to show you guys what all of these varieties look like. We're going to slice into them and taste them and also give you my experience or opinion growing these particular varieties. I absolutely love watching tomato review videos because it gives me so many ideas on new cultivars to try again next season. So if you're looking for inspiration on some new tomato varieties to try in your garden, this video is for you. All right, so let's get started. The very first one that I wanna try is this one right here. I am so excited about this one. This one is called Giant Siberian Pink, or sometimes I see the name online being Siberian Giant Pink. I'm just gonna call it Giant Siberian Pink. This is a massive beefsteak tomato. I decided to try growing this one because I was looking for a pink colored beefsteak tomato. And what makes this a pink tomato is that the skin is actually clear while the inside flesh is red so it kind of gives the skin an outside appearance of being like a pinky color as opposed to like a deep rich crimson kind of red so that's why these are called pink tomatoes so i just so happened to select this one because it just looked good and i'm so glad i chose it this turns out to be kind of a rare tomato and it produced so well for me like i am so impressed i grow hundreds of tomatoes and so when i tell you guys that i am blown away by a particular variety pay attention this giant siberian pink produced loads and loads of these big giant beefsteak tomatoes, which is kind of not the norm for the beefsteaks because they have to gather a lot of energy from the sun, nutrients from the soil, things like that to output big sized tomatoes like this. But these plants are pumping them like nothing. And usually with the beefsteaks, the first couple will be really big like this. And then the subsequent tomatoes are smaller in size, but no, this plant, every single one of them are really big in size. I've harvested five of them today because they were ready, but I counted 12 more big ones on the plant that are still ripening up. That's a lot of beefsteak tomatoes at one time on the same plant. So very, very impressed. I will probably be growing this one every single season. And if you wanna try growing any of the tomatoes that I mentioned here, I do save the seeds and I sell them on my website so you can find the same ones. So just to show you, this one started blushing. It's like a light pink color. This one is a little bit more ripened, so it's a darker kind of pink color, but just really heavy, massive tomatoes. And I have never tried this one before. This is the first time I'm growing it. So I'm super excited to slice into it. Let me slice into this one. All right, so here goes. Very juicy. I just see all the juices running out and man this is a meaty tomato looks great this is what you want to see when you're looking for a tomato that's good for sandwiches very good flavor right off the bat it's very savory it has that tomato acidity to it this is great i am very impressed by this one i've kind of had the same like top three or five tomatoes for a couple years now but this one definitely is going to join the ranks and if you didn't know i am in florida so my garden is in florida we have a very high disease and pest pressure so when i tell you that a tomato grew very successfully in my garden that means it tolerated a lot of extreme conditions so if it does well in my garden i can't even imagine how well it will do in your garden or someone else's garden that maybe has more temperate or consistent type of weather conditions because that's what tomatoes like. Ideally, they just like more consistent type of weather. So if I'm able to grow all of this in Florida, these are good varieties. All right, next up we have this one right here. This one is called Marglobe. And I didn't know much about this tomato until I started researching it for this video. It turns out this is an old heirloom. It was specifically bred to handle high heat and humidity type of situations like here in Florida. And apparently this kind of saved the Florida tomato industry back in the day because it does handle our extreme weather pretty well. So I guess Florida farmers were able to continue producing tomatoes. So this was very popular back in the day. It is also said to have a pretty high disease resistance type package. It's got a decent resistance to lots of different diseases. I'm not going to list them all, but that says a lot for it being an heirloom. Usually you find those disease resistant type package deals with the newer hybrid tomatoes, but it says a lot for it being an heirloom. So yeah, this one is called Marglobe. And I also note this skin is like perfect. It looks like a tomato I bought at the grocery store. It's smooth. It's shiny barely has any cracks. Cracking is a big deal for me here in Florida. A lot of my tomatoes crack because of just the extreme weather. One day will be really hot, the next day will be kind of cold, while the next day will be extremely dry conditions, and then all of a sudden we'll get dumped with a bunch of rain. So all of those like extreme fluctuations in the weather cause a lot of tomatoes to crack, and there's really not much you can do about it. So a lot of mine have cracks on it, but they're still perfectly fine and edible. And again, if you're gardening in a more temperate, normal <laughs> kind of climate, your tomatoes won't crack as much. But anyways, let's slice into this Marglo tomato. And I do have to say, I am impressed by the way that the plants look like. They do look extra healthy and green. Not a lot of diseases are overtaking the foliage compared to some of the other tomatoes I'm growing. So I do agree that it does have a decent disease resistance. 
really good so tasting this one here it's like a normal tomato kind of tastes more similar to like the tomatoes i buy at the grocery store so a little bit of a letdown but the texture is much better it's like crisp and not mealy at all so i'm not super wowed by the flavor compared to some of the other tomatoes that i've grown but that just shows that a lot of the tomatoes that are bred for production purposes usually are lacking in flavor because they're bred to look beautiful nice shiny smooth skin and produce well you know in extreme climates like mine but then it's usually lacking some flavor so it's good it's definitely better than a tomato you'll buy at the grocery store especially when it's vine ripened and i harvested it fresh but flavor wise it's not as good as some of the other more interesting tomatoes that i grow however if you're in an extreme climate like florida or it's really rainy you have a lot of diseases stuff like that this is better than nothing <laughs> so i definitely do recommend marglobe if you're dealing with all of those issues all right so next up we're going to try one of my micro dwarfs so this season i went crazy with all the micro dwarf tomatoes because i finally got a whole bunch of these green stock garden towers so i was looking for for like smaller more compact varieties of different crops and edibles to plant in these micro dwarfs fit that bill perfectly i actually have three different micro dwarfs to try this is the first video where i've ever tried one of my micro dwarfs or reviewed it this one right here is called rosy finch i believe it is considered a pink cherry tomato because again the skin is translucent so it reflects the inside red color flesh and it makes it just look kind of like a pinky color this plant started producing at just seven inches tall which is crazy it was loaded with tons of these so very good production wise for being such a tiny plant. I definitely recommend micro dwarfs if you're growing in a green stock garden tower in containers or even like on a patio garden. You could easily grow one in a tiny little one gallon size pot or something like that. But anyways, let's give this one a try. Very sweet. I just get a lot of sweetness from it. That is good. It's like a fresh, sweet flavor. So I want to compare this one, the Rosie Finch, to the other two micro dwarfs I have here. So let's just review those next. This one right here is called Orange Hat. It is another micro dwarf. The final color of the ripened up cherry tomatoes is this orange color. They're not as big in size as the Rosie Finch or this other micro dwarf here. This one is called Pygmy, but let's see if it makes up for that size with its flavor. Mmm, that is really good. That was very sweet. It's almost like candy sweet. It reminds me a lot of Sun Gold or something like that. I like the flavor of this orange hat micro dwarf better than the Rosie Finch. But that's just me though. I like really unique tasting tomatoes, a lot of sweetness, you know, different kinds of flavor contrasts and stuff like that. And finally, let's try this Pygmy Micro Dwarf Cherry Tomato. And all the micro dwarfs are cherry tomatoes. I have never seen any that are bigger than that, like a slicer or beefsteak. If you have, please let me know. But honestly, I just can't imagine a seven inch plant being able to output a big beefsteak so it makes sense. This is Pygmy. It's a bright red colored cherry tomato. It's actually a pretty decent sized cherry tomato for being a micro dwarf again. But let's taste test it. Mmm, really good. Just red standard cherry tomato. Out of the three micro dwarfs here though, my favorite is definitely the orange hat. And I will put the names of all of these tomato varieties below in the description. All right, so that was all the micro dwarfs. Moving along, we have one of my all-time favorites. This is definitely in my top five. And it's the Paul Robeson Heirloom Tomato. I grow this one every single season. A lot of people agree they love the flavor of this one. So Paul Robeson is like a standard medium-sized beefsteak tomato. It's not as big as like these giant Siberian pinks. So this is a pretty good standard Paul Robeson sized tomato. It usually starts off like a coppery kind of brick red on the bottom and the shoulders are green when you harvest it. But if you put it on the kitchen counter and let it continue to ripen, it gets even darker, like a really dark brick red color. So just a really unique looking tomato. This is where you want to eat it though, when it's completely mahogany kind of red like this. This tomato is kind of historic. It comes from Russia and it was named after the singer, actor, activist Paul Robeson. And just slicing into it again it just looks so intense the colors are really deep kind of rich wine red color and it's super juicy and meaty this is great for sandwiches Oh yeah, this is why this one is in my top five or even like top three. It hits all the flavor profiles for me. Now, don't laugh at me, but when I talk about tomatoes, I talk about the flavor profiles. You got sweet, savory, or even like umami sometimes, earthiness, smokiness, fruity, and acidity basically. These are the kind of tomatoes that I like when they hit all those different flavor profiles instead of leaning just more so on one end of the spectrum. So very good. It is a favorite for a reason. And this produces so good for me here in my Florida garden. 
I have tried growing other really popular tomatoes that are known for their flavor, like Cherokee Purple and Brandywine. I'll tell you right now, I've never been successful growing any kind of Brandywine. I've tried all the different colors, different strains. Brandywine does not like my Florida garden. I don't know why. I have grown Cherokee Purple and have had some limited success with it. It will produce a couple, you know, decent tomatoes, but not on a level as some of the other varieties that I grow. So that's why you don't see me maybe promoting so much like Cherokee Purple and Brandywine. But instead, grow Paul Ropes and this one always does great for me. All right, so next we have a paste tomato. This one is a really big variety. It's called Jersey Giant. And this plant has been growing in my garden since last fall. So yes, I grow my tomatoes from fall through my winter and spring. It just doesn't get cold enough here to kill off my tomato plants. So that's a really long growing season. That's like nine months in a row that I get to grow, you know, these tomato plants. So I get to harvest a lot from them. And my Jersey Giant plants are still pumping them out even nine months later. This is a paste tomato though. So so just so you know, paste tomatoes are known to be kind of like on the dry side. You don't want to be using tomatoes that have a lot of juice or water or liquid because when you process the tomatoes to make paste or what I like to do is make tomato sauce, you need to cook out all that extra water. So if you start out with watery types of tomatoes, that just means more cooking time, trying to cook out or evaporate out that extra water. So that's why these paste tomatoes exist. They're on the drier side. Since they are a little bit drier, not as juicy, they're not the best for fresh eating eating. They really shine though when you're making like the sauces and paste. So I'm going to slice into it and give it a taste test. But just so you know, I already know the flavor is not going to be like amazing compared to some of these other ones that are meant to be eaten fresh. So this is the inside of the Jersey Giants. As you can see, the cavity does have some spaces in there where it's dried. It's not like full of seeds and gel and flesh and that kind of thing. So this is really good if you want to make tomato sauce or something like that. I'll try it anyways. Mm, it's not bad actually. It has a lot of sweetness to it, which is surprising. Usually these things don't have much flavor until they're exposed to heat and you cook them down. That's when the flavor really comes out. But this tastes pretty good. Like I would continue eating this one fresh. So again, this one is the Jersey Giant. And as you can see here, all of them are pretty consistent in size. All right, next is another new tomato to me. I have not tried this one yet, so I'm really excited to give it a taste test. This one is called Moya John. It's a tomato from France or bread in France. John means yellow in French. It's definitely a very sunny looking bright yellow tomato and all the tomatoes on the plant are pretty big consistently like this big. So let's slice into this one. Also, I noticed the plants aren't like super big. <laughs> Usually with the beef steaks, you kind of have to wait for the plants to get a decent size to be able to output, you know, big beef steaks like this. But the plants on this are about like four feet tall. Slicing into it, you can tell it's super, super meaty. The inside is solid yellow interior. It does look like it might have some orange marbling effect. Maybe if this ripened up even more, it would be more pronounced. Anyways, let's give it a try. Mm. All I taste is sweetness and fruitiness. Really good. One of my favorite things to do with all of these tomatoes is I will take different color or like flavor types of tomatoes and dice them up to make bruschetta with that because then you get like such a combination of all the different flavors. So for example, I would dice up some of this Moya John because it's the sweet and fruity side of things. Then maybe I would mix it with some of this Paul Robeson that has more of that savoriness and earthiness. And then maybe mix it with Marglobe or one of these standard like red tomatoes just to get all of those different flavor combinations in there and it's amazing. So really good. I could see myself eating this whole tomato. All right, so we just have about three tomatoes left. These two right here are actually a hybrid. I was gifted this seed to try growing it by somebody on Instagram, another Florida gardener. I'll put his information below in the description. If you're in Florida, you definitely need to be following him. But he gifted me this seed. This is a hybrid tomato. It's called Improved Medusa. He got the seed from a Florida breeder. So I'm really interested to learn more about what they're doing. I will definitely put that breeder's information as well below in the description once I learn a little bit more about them. But anyways, there is a hybrid tomato called Medusa. This is the improved version of that Medusa hybrid. I would say production wise, it did okay. It didn't do as much as like the Siberian Giant Pink or something like that, or even my Paul Robeson. But where this tomato really shines, I believe is like its disease package and heat resistance. So I'm gonna monitor the plants just to see, you know, how well they do now that we're going into the summer months. But right off the bat, this tomato has an unusual kind of brown coppery orange color to it so kind of very different compared to the rest of the tomatoes but let's slice into it i've not tried this one either so very excited to give it a try the inside kind of reminds me of paul robeson just like a deep brick kind of red color 
Flavor's okay. I just taste sweetness, a little bit of acidity, not on the level of Paul Robeson. And I'm probably gonna say Paul Robeson a million times because it's that good. It's one of my favorites. I guess where this tomato will really shine is its disease package and heat resistance. Like the, how far will this make it into my summer? They cannot handle all of that heat. They just attract a lot of pests. They start catching all of the diseases and I'd rather just terminate, finish, be done with my tomato season, pull out all my plants because now they're basically just hosts for all of those pathogens and stuff that are spreading around the garden. So I like to clean up my garden at the end of June and just remove all my tomatoes. It's fine. I've been growing some of them for about nine months and I've harvested a ton. It will be interesting to see how far this one makes it though. All right, so up next we have a dwarf tomato knot, micro dwarf, dwarf. So the dwarf tomatoes are more compact plants. They get around three to four feet at maturity. So very small plants, still a good option for some of the smaller gardens, but they still produce full-sized tomatoes. So beef steaks and stuff like that. Actually, some of the biggest beef steaks I've ever harvested come from some dwarf tomatoes here in my garden. This one is called Rosella Crimson. It was well recommended because a lot of people say that the flavor rivals that of brandy wine. And since I'm unable to be successful with growing brandy wine, I was attracted to giving this one a try. However, I don't think the production was that great on the plants compared to some of the other tomatoes that just produce a lot more and taste really good as well. But again, that could just be the spot it was growing in in my garden or that particular genetics of that plant. Maybe it'll do better in someone else's garden. We'll just have to see. So let's slice into it and rosella crimson i believe is another pink tomato it does have like a pinky tone to it instead of that deep crimson red all of the tomatoes were about this size so in my opinion this isn't exactly a beefsteak this is more of just a slicer and it's very meaty and juicy Mm. I do like the flavor though. It's pretty good. Initially, the plants weren't really producing much. They definitely started producing way more towards the end of my season. So I wasn't really that impressed, but I have to say, you know, the flavor is actually pretty good. It's got a unique type of sweetness and savoriness to it. So if you're looking for a good flavor dwarf tomato, I would recommend this one. Again, this one is called Rosella Crimson. All right, finally, we're to the last tomato. This one is a really cool looking tomato. This one is called Pink Berkeley Tie Dye. It kind of looks like Christmas to me because it has green and red striping on it. This one right here is more ripe than this one. So the colors are even deeper and darker when compared to this one, but still just really cool looking tomatoes. And every tomato on that plant is about this size. So very consistent. So let's slice into it. All right. So very juicy. This would make a great tomato for sandwiches and things like that. The inside is like a brick mahogany kind of red color, very similar to Paul Robeson. Mm. Flavor wise, it's bright. It has like a punch of acidity to it, followed by like savoriness to it. So very interesting. Plus, where are you ever going to find a tomato with green and red stripes like that? You'll never see one like this at the grocery store. And I do have to say the plants for this pink Berkeley tie dye are loaded. There's a ton more tomatoes there that are forming. This is just like the beginning here. So I am impressed with its production so far. All right. So out of all of these tomatoes, if I just had to pick a couple that were my favorite flavor wise, definitely Paul Robeson by far. It's going to be hard for a tomato to knock this one down from probably like the number one spot for me. Second would be the orange hat. I really like how fruity and sweet that was. And third, I think I will have to pick the Rosella Crimson. I think those three here are best flavor wise. Production wise though, definitely this Siberian Giant Pink. The flavor is okay. It just doesn't stand out as much as the other ones. And the pink Berkeley tie dye. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this tomato review video and it inspired you to try maybe some new varieties next season in your garden. If you have any favorites, especially flavor wise to recommend to me, please comment below. I'm always looking for suggestions on new tomatoes that I should try growing next season. And if you're looking for more information on how to grow tomatoes, or you want to see my whole process, my method, my technique, I definitely have a tomato playlist totally dedicated to everything you would need to know about tomatoes. It also includes some more tomato review videos. I've done quite a few of them so far. I will link that tomato playlist below in the description. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.